This video introduces a MATLAB GUI which does tank level with disturbances. So the purpose of the video is to show that uncertainty has a significant impact on the behaviour of real systems and that simple strategies such as open loop or manual control are often ineffective at managing uncertainty. You'll notice the key word there is often, we're not saying always. And only when an automatic feedback controller is introduced does the behaviour return to something acceptable. So the idea is the students have a tool here which relates to a real scenario and they can play and get a feel for um, a real situation and why control is important. So this is the system we're going to look at which is very common in the process industry. We've got a tank and you'll see it's got fluid flowing in and it's got fluid flowing out. And what we want to do is maintain the depth in the tank. So the first question you ask is, well, how does the depth depend upon the flow in and the flow out? And also, how does the flow out depend upon the depth? Well, we're not going to do detailed modelling here because that's covered in the modelling sections on the videos. And we're just going to tell you that you can get a model of this form where A is the cross-sectional area of the tank, assumed constant, H is the depth, and R is some constant, so I'm going to put R here, which links to the resistance of the outflow pipe, and F in is the flow in. So in practice, however, this is what we're going to do. We're going to say there may be an extra flow in coming in in the side or from somewhere else. So the inlet flow suffers perturbations and it could be due to poor control of the flow in, poor modelling or unforeseen spillages coming into the system. Also, the outflow rate is going to vary because of changes in this R. And the reason this R could change could be of temporary blockages in the pipe, temporary stiction, so sticky taps, and uh, back pressure and other issues. So what we've got is the flow in is going to be what we expect it to be plus some perturbation which we don't know about and that could be due to random spillages and the like. And also R, which is the outlet resistance pipe, is going to have some value which is what we expect plus some perturbation due to factors we don't know about. And so we've put two levels of uncertainty into this GUI so the students can explore how does this uncertainty expect, affect the behaviour of the tank. So here we go. The inflow is going to be varied randomly by the software every 300 seconds to simulate random changes in the operating regime and the impact of upstream effects. And similarly, the outflow resistance is varied directly, in this keyword it's varied directly by the user. So you select R expected and you select R. So that as a user you can say, OK, what happens if I change the, um, the tap at some point? What effect will it have? Now, just as a warning, there is a constraint on the maximum flow in, as there would be on real processes. And one of the things you might want to ask yourself is, what happens when this constraint becomes active? What happens to your control of behaviour? Now, how do you run this GUI then? Ensure you've got the P code file and the fig file, and then move to the relevant folder. You can see I've got mine in a folder, tank level with disturbances GUI, and type the name. And the file name here is tank level with disturbance. And this is what it looks like. And you'll notice you've got a number of buttons that you can change. Some you can just leave fixed, don't worry about it. So target depth, you can leave that at 1.2. And you see it's marked here by this solid black line. The PI parameters, you may want to choose because you're going to have to design a PI controller in order to control the depth at some point. But some default values are entered for you. The tank cross-sectional area affects the dynamics of the tank, so you can change that or leave it at the default. It's up to you. But the key ones here are the uncertainty. These two boxes tell you about uncertainty. So expected flow in is the top box, actual flow in is the bottom box. So if the flow is not what you expect, you'll see that these two numbers differ. And you'll see there's a, a pop-up here which says inlet flow disturbance on, and if that's on, these two numbers may differ, and if it's off, they will always be the same. Now what about the valve? You can set the values all the way over here. You see you've got two boxes, expected R and actual R, and it's up to you what you put in those two boxes. You can make them the same, or you can make them different. 
And here, you'll notice there's another pop-down, which if you switch outlet valve errors to off, then they will be forced to be the same. And finally, the final pop-up allows you to do manual control, it allows you to tune the PI, or in fact allows you to do a heuristic PI as well, where it's tuned for you. And all the plots are put down in this window, and you'll see the inlet flow in green, and the inlet disturbance in red. So you can see whenever there's a spillage or something else, that red line will change, and it can only be positive. OK, so the challenge is, can we maintain the desired depth by manually selecting the inflow? So in manual mode, set a fixed value of flow in and ask yourself, is the depth requirement satisfied? You can try changing the flow yourself dynamically. Can you achieve effective control? And another thing you might want to look at is how is your ability to control manually affected by parameters like volume and R. So if you change those, does that change your ability to do this manually? And challenge two is to introduce a PI. And obviously what you're trying to do is do a comparison of PI control with manual control. Now there's two options with PI. You can tune the PI yourself. So obviously that's allowing you to do a slightly more advanced experiment because first of all, you have to identify the system parameters. And once you've identified the system parameters, say, okay, this is how I tune my PI. Or you can use an auto-tune PI, which we've done for you. Let's go to the GUI then and have a look. So here's the GUI. So let's get it started. So there we go. Off it runs. Um, and you'll see this green line tells you, oh, sorry, the red line tells you there's been an inflow disturbance. Now notice this is multiplied by 100 so that you can see it. So it's not actually as big a disturbance as you might be thinking. Now our target depth is 1.2. We're nowhere near. So let's manually change this inflow rate to something a bit bigger and see whether we can get the target depth. And we're not really getting there. And the key point we're asking ourselves is, can I do this manually? And if I leave it at a particular point, am I going to get the target depth that I want? And the key thing you'll notice is every time the unit flow disturbance changes, the depth changes. And so it's actually quite difficult to get this right. OK, we're looking up here. It's quite difficult to get it right. You can you can mess about. And the idea is you can try and you say, OK, can I actually control this depth manually by moving this? Can I leave it in a fixed place? And it's hopefully obvious if I leave it in a fixed place, it doesn't work. Because if you get a large spillage, well, we're all over the place. Um, now, what would happen if I changed the R? So here, the actual R has now gone to 0.2. Now, it will not accept that R immediately. Sometimes it waits a couple of cycles. But now you see it's accepted that R. And what's happened to the depth? You see the depth is going way off. And my manual control was a bit slow to react, or very slow to react. OK? So if you get a temporary stick, um, sticking point, um, you could be very, very slow to react. And you'll see, basically, manual control is not particularly effective here. OK, so what I'm going to do now is switch to auto-tune PI. You'll see there's an option PI control. If you choose the option PI, it will choose the P and the I from these sliders, so you can do it yourself. I'm going to do the auto-tune just to demonstrate that it works. So you haven't got bumpless transfer, so in the first instance, it will... Oh, and because the expected and the R are different, the auto-tune obviously works on the expected R, so if those are very different, the auto-tune may not do a good job. And that's something else you can look at. The auto-tune is picking up this area, and it's picking up the expected R. So if there's big errors, the auto-tune won't work very well. But now, you can see it's not doing too bad a job. You'll see we're getting the level roughly to where we want. And whenever we get perturbations, you see pretty much it's keeping you at the level that you want. So it's doing a fairly good job. Now, one of the things you might want to look at is what if you make these R's too big? And now you'll see we have a problem. And what's the problem? You'll see the flow rate is maxed out. If you look at this slider, you see the flow rate is maxed out, the maximum flow we can get. All right. 
but what's the depth? We're nowhere near the target. And basically what that's saying is if you open this tap too wide, so this expected R is quite large, then I can't get an inlet flow rate to match the outlet flow rate I would have with full depth. So we've exceeded constraints and you can explore um, how these R's and other things affect constraints for yourself. So let's stop that and exit it. Okay. So there's several things you can do. How is your ability to control automatically affected by parameters A and R and a number of other things. So ultimately you should understand the impact of uncertainty on system behavior. You should recognize that in general manual or open loop control are often ineffective at dealing with disturbances and hence result in poor control. And automatic feedback is a cheap and effective solution, but of course it relies on the feedback design being done well.